Since the reveal of Halo Infinite for E3 this year, a lot of people have been asking what are your thoughts on the presentation? Well, in this video, I'll give you just that. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now we've been grinding the content for Halo Infinite, talking about everything that this game has to offer for us right now. Now I would say overwhelmingly, it's been very positive for the reception of the Halo Infinite presentation this year, but there are some people that have some concerns, uh, which I've seen online as well, which we will address in this video. But to give you the TLDR, it was pretty awesome, but I'll show you why it was awesome in this video. So if you guys like these kind of analytical, just opinion piece videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So to start off that the presentation itself throughout the whole thing, which is Xbox is like flagship title Halo was presented for about seven minutes within this hour and a half long presentation. And it was kind of just wedged like right in the middle at the 35 minute mark of the live stream is when we finally got a chance to get some Halo. Now, obviously they probably wanted to keep a lot of people on the stream because I probably I'm sure once they saw Starfield and they saw Halo, a lot of people wanted to drop off. So I totally understand that. So a whole entire presentation being just seven minutes long can be a little underwhelming but the idea about these e3 presentations is that they're meant to be much more something that to just get your attention get you excited want to know more about the game i mean xbox had 30 titles to showcase within an hour and 30 minutes so it's not a whole lot of time to just give to just halo i mean that was a solid chunk don't get me wrong showcasing some campaign and mainly multiplayer within this reveal which i'm glad that's what they revealed because obviously for the first trailer we saw was kind of a campaign-ish kind of graphical demo kind of thing. Next was the Discover Hope, which is the beginning of the campaign. And then we had the gameplay reveal of the campaign of for 2020. And then now we had actually a bit extended trailer of the Discover Hope trailer, just kind of what happens after he jumps out of the Pelican. I saw a lot of people complain that there was not enough campaign showcase. They didn't really show a lot about what they really did between the whole year process. But the thing is to try to showcase all the polish work that they did for Halo Infinite is not exactly the most advertising kind of exciting things to talk about, like draw distance, shadowing, you know, geometry, render, render, render resolutions and things like that. Like it's not that really interesting to talk about. It's pretty boring. But in this presentation, they needed to show some form of compare or contrast of what we had in 2020 and what we have now in 2021. And we got that with the overlooking view that we had of the environment of Halo Infinite. So this is just a small section of the world and this place is massive. And from what I saw, we didn't see any pop in textures. The lighting looked consistent. It even looked like it was improved. The texture quality was certainly improved as well. And the performance was rather smooth. It's just a smooth camera transition. Seemed like it was holding a solid 60 frames from what we saw on the stream. And beyond that, I couldn't really ask a whole lot more. And for like a detailed snippet of what we got for like graphical upgrades, we'll just look at the extended trailer that we got for the second half of the Discover Hope trailer essentially that was showcased and how the visual difference of Chief is. He's a darker shade of green, much more beat up and banged up because, well, he was in a battle, lost it, stranded out in space, the guy's gonna look a little beat. This is like Halo 2 level of wear and tear on the armor set, which just looks totally badass and so much more characteristic and looks like he was in a battle, which he was. Not saying that the previous Discover Hope trailer didn't look awesome, it certainly did, but it just looked very clean and new, which was, I know it's kind of like the idea that they're trying to go with, Halo Infinite is kind of a clean new start, so you want Chief to kind of mirror that same kind of feeling that 343 is trying to accomplish with this game, but obviously there's some kind of continuity that kind of comes with that. Obviously, you get in the middle of battle, you're gonna get beat up a little bit. And the multiplayer trailer looked freaking cool. I mean, like for a multiplayer trailer, what do you expect to see? Multiplayer gameplay, and that's exactly what we got. And there's a lot of little tidbits of information which we did cover in my multiplayer breakdown video if you guys want to check that out. You know, it showcased new weapons, new armors, new equipment, new mechanics, and just everything about the game, BTB. And well, I'm just flat out excited about this game. I also really like that we had Joseph Staten and Bonnie Ross on stage talking to you, the viewers, about this game. Because if you're gonna have people want to come out and buy your game, well, you probably want the leads of the game itself to tell you what it's all about, to give you a high level view of what the, the game is going to provide for people because they're going to give you the best response. A multiplayer lead will probably get too much into the details. A campaign lead, probably the same. Give it to the boss, Bonnie Ross. 
So I'll give you the overview of just, this is what you're trying to accomplish with this game. Joseph Stadium might give you a little more of the direct feels of what we're gonna be doing in the game. So 343 definitely had the right people on stage telling you what Halo Infinite is all about. Now a big concern I heard from a lot of people was saying that it was a little underwhelming, which I can kind of understand that. My jaw wasn't like dropped from this trailer, certainly was not. Current Halo fans who currently play Halo saw that and what they saw they certainly liked. But I'm sure a lot of people who are thinking about the bigger picture of Halo who are also Halo fans we're probably thinking, well, what's going to bring new people into this franchise? Because the thing about Halo is that it's a really old franchise. This year marks 20 years of Halo. So most gamers out there have probably had a chance to play Halo or at least have a good idea what Halo has to offer and things like that. And so I was kind of honestly expecting like a big, huge new mode rather than just like the return of BTB, which is more like a bigger TB in a way, because now we have 24 players instead of 16, which is awesome. Larger scale maps new ordinance drops calling and stuff that's all awesome like new mode kind of experiences within btb but i was kind of hoping for something you know just a little bit bigger like like i know it was just complete leaks and rumors of like a 64 player kind of battlefield like mode which i think halo could totally scale up to like 64 maybe even 100 players or something like that so i don't know if it's necessarily btb 2.0 but it's more like bigger tb if that's kind of the way i want to phrase it but am i excited to play bigger tb you better damn believe it from what it looks like Halo players will really like Halo Infinite, but will new players or returning players like Halo Infinite? That's a big question to answer with this. And I honestly would agree that from what I saw, I didn't really see anything that would grab new players to come play Halo. It just looked like we're just giving you straight up, unfiltered, untainted with, tampered with or whatever, just pure Halo experience. So like what Jeff Grubb said in his leak that the Halo trailer is made for Halo ass Halo fans, he kind of hit the nail on the head with that phrase. Now I definitely want to touch on the little discussion that we had within this reveal for the campaign side of things between the new Cortana and Master Chief. Now it does seem kind of confusing exactly what's going on with the original Cortana model because they're saying that we delivered Cortana, she should have been deactivated, meaning this new Cortana would have been deleted, but new Cortana is still here. So what's going on with Cortana? That's a big thing we do not know right now. Now I did figure we probably would have gotten a new Cortana in Halo Infinite back when the Discover Hope trailer was revealed because if you looked at the serial number on the chip that's in Master Chief's hand, it showcases the same serial number as Cortana but just one number higher, indicating a new Cortana model. Now I have a feeling that we probably have two different kind of Cortanas that we have one that's like our friendly one that's like Cortana but not really Cortana if you know what I mean and we have the original Cortana out there somewhere in the wilderness causing some havoc. Now how exactly will this new Cortana model and old Cortana model work out within the story? Well we'll just have to wait and see until we get to play this game. And lastly I want to talk about the release date. We did not get one. Now I'm like guys what do we need to do to get a release date out of you guys? I mean, we definitely you know, heard rumors that it might come out in September. Those are the recent leaks. I think they're confusing that with the public play test dates, which we will have, which 343 confirmed in the most recent blog update, which it did make a video on, if you guys want to check that out. So I'm expecting public flighting to start in September, probably nothing in October, as 343 needs to take time to analyze some data and take community feedback. And then in November, release the game. And you know we've heard that Bonnie Ross hinted at a November release date when the all day 2021 timeframe was announcing, hey, doesn't somebody have an anniversary happening that year? Yeah, in November 15th, the 20th anniversary of Halo. We had the voice of Master Chief, Steve Downs, and a new voice actor within Halo, Vernon Roberts, both state that the game is slated for a November release as well. So I think it's like the worst kept secret that it's gonna be a November release date. So I don't know why we're gonna hold off because there's gonna be three months Time frame when you would release the game September, October, November. Like I said, flighting most likely in September. I doubt in October, just because, like, to give 343 just a little bit more time for polishing and stuff like that and feedback from the flight that most most likely happen in September, which it did say later in the summer, which September is late in the summer. And then November would be the time frame to release the game. Then you want to release it before Black Friday, which would leave about a two week time period meaning that you'd probably release it somewhere between November 1st to like the 17th, 18th or something like that. So you just pick a date, guys. Like, I don't know why you had to just not say anything yet, but maybe they're just kind of stretching out so I can make a video strictly about the release date or something to get, you know, more content for you guys. I don't know. 
But overall, guys, I am very happy about this review. I'm really looking forward to the news that's going to be coming out throughout this week as well. We will be reporting on it as soon as it comes out on this channel as well, guys. So if you'd like to stay updated with everything going on with Halo or missing any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. i got a link to all my news and informational videos. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.